All right, let's get into our discussions proper now. The United mm -hmm. States has charged media owners in Nigeria to take the welfare of journalists seriously. Now, this came after a session between officials from the American Embassy in Nigeria and journalists in Kaduna State, northwest of the country. Tessa Makende has a story. The journalists converged on the State University in Kaduna. Officials from the embassy were also present during a two-hour movie session with students of mass communication. It focused on investigative journalism. Ideas were welcome on how to take the practice of the profession to the next level. Many noted that journalists in Nigeria are doing their best with little or nothing to show for it. If you look at the environment, I don't believe that the so-called um, journalists elsewhere can do as good as they do here if they are brought into our environment. Many believe they could achieve a lot better with the right environment and work tools. With security for journalism, for journalists, that is one. On the other hand, again, we have interest of the owners. When the interest of the owners, when the owners decide to put patriotism ahead of personality, I think we're going to practice investigative journalism. The environment, remuneration and active support from uh, different individuals and agencies who own the media is a big problem. And uh, without enough support for our journalists, actually it's going to be a Herculean task. Officials from the embassy said the take-home pay of journalists in the country must be pushed beyond what it is at the moment. Whether it be the taxi fees we hear about or other types of ways of paying journalists, that's not right. Um, Journalists cannot be accurate, they cannot be objective, they cannot be professional if they have to worry about offending the uh, person or institution that they're covering. Investigative journalism entails digging beyond the ordinary to unveil facts. Journalists here pledge to continue to do just that. Tessem Akende, TVC News, Kaduna. Well, I wonder if you can have a Carl Bernstein in Nigeria. Uh, that report says media practitioners are doing their best with what's available. Well, we have our guests in the studio, Executive Director of uh, Badagri Prime Magazine, Yomi Olomofe. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. Uh, are we making the best of the situation, talking about media practitioners, journalists, within the circumstances that we find ourselves in this uh, part? Well, um, I, I'll say... A timid, yes. Mm. Uh, timid in the sense that um, one would have wanted to go onto the hilltops to shout that yes, we are doing our best. But you can see that um, there are quite a lot of challenges that Nigerian journalists have to grapple with. Mm. Um, there is the core and critical issue of welfare, uh, which is for me uh, a major pivot for independent journalism practice. And um, there is also the issue of uh, uh, the, the terrain, mm. safety for journalists, safety of journalists. Uh, there is the issue of uh, uh, state actor's attitude to the practice of an independent, objective, and you know, truthful uh, journalism in Nigeria. Um, so with some of these inhibitions, mm. Uh, one may not be as enthusiastic about saying, yes, we're doing great, as one would have wished to be. Um, but having said this, uh, we must understand that uh, media practice in Nigeria, mm -hmm. just like the country itself, is uh, a work in progress um, to the extent that uh, our economy, our politics, uh, our sociology as a nation, as a people, is evolving. Okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come back to this to dwell more on this, but let's go on a break now and then we'll be back to dwell more. Stay with us on TVC Breakfast, we'll go on a break. And now let's get back into our discussion proper. It's World Press Freedom Day mm -hmm. and the world is marking this day. It's really very critical this time around because uh, a lot of developments taking place across the world it calls for critical thinking. Yes, indeed. And mm. Nigeria is still on the list of countries where it is dangerous to practice journalism. All right. We have uh, the executive director of Badagri Prime uh, Magazine, mm -hmm. uh, Yomi Olomofe. He is with us. Now, let's, <clears throat> let's talk about, the, we played a report earlier on that to, the, a lot of respondents were talking about the interest of media owners. The, the, how does that impact on the ability to perform journalism the way it's supposed to be? 
in very devastating ways, one must say, um, because um, you find that a very large chunk of media owners in this terrain are also seriously political. And um, that inhibits the independence of media practice. Um, you also find that economic considerations are a key issue in media ownership in Nigeria. Um, if you get too critical in your reportage, in your news items and the stuff you carry in your publication, how does it affect economic uh, turnover, the, the economic turnover mm -hmm. of, of the owners? And um, because the owners really have not come to see most media owners in Nigeria have not come to see journalism as uh, a, a, a calling that must be distinct, and a calling that must be independent, and a calling that must not be tied to the apron string of any uh, interest block, economic, political, or what have you. And so because of all of these considerations, you find that uh, the, the autonomy of the, of the average media practitioner is tied to the, the whims, economic whims of his uh, media owner. And this brings me to what we must really begin to look more critically at in this country, in this part of the country, which is independent, the practice of private independent journalism uh, and the funding for independent journalism, the funding for investigative journalists. Uh, where funding is tied to certain considerations, mm. then it is you know, uh, the rep eventual reportage that suffers for it. Yes, uh, and of course, you, you talked about political ties. I, I wonder how do you extricate the media, uh, the practice of journalism from uh, political um, influences and all of that? And you have been at the receiving end of uh, the negative uh, outcome of practicing your job as a journalist. Yeah. You, you were in the line of fire, so to yeah. speak. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to tell us ab about that and how have we fared really? I mean, I was reading somewhere yesterday and somebody was trying to compare the practice of journalism under civilian government and a military administration. Touch on all of this. Yeah, you see, what I must say, you know, as a takeoff point, yes. is that, uh, like I said, our country is evolving. And uh, the notion, the, the attitude, the sociology, the mindset of people who get to high office mm -hmm. is still a bit warped in terms of uh, relations with the media. Uh, people unduly want to hide things. Mm. People unduly also want to uh, corner things they really may not need. And because you have cornered something you, do not really, you may not really need, there is also the need for you to protect and shield that which you have cornered. Okay, and so the you journalists, were, the you, journalists you, you who You were then, attacked, I want, because of uh, want of time, you were attacked in the course of your of doing your job. Exactly. We were, we, are you, have you been able to put your finger on the reason exactly why you were attacked? Yes, of and course. It's, what it's, has it's, been it, the outcome? It's about, it's about shielding information from the public. The basic, the essential duty of the journalist, to my mind, is to keep the reading public abreast of happenings, is to hold government and state actors accountable mm -hmm. to the people. Now, because state actors and people in government have a, a number of uh, things going up their sleeve that they do not want the people they lead to know about. The journalist is therefore an impediment. Mm -hmm. And um, for those of them who are very, very intolerant of the need to have a vibrant press, the, the risk to the practicing journalist remains high. Only about a fortnight ago, a journalist in Bayesa was, was going killed. down in his residence. Mm -hmm. That is the vulnerability we're talking about here. What is the protection for the journalist who must report the truth? What is the truth? A state official who's been saddled with responsibilities, sensitive responsibilities, had uh, compromised. And because he had compromised, he does not want the, the, the public to know. The journalist has a duty to tell the public yeah. there, is a, there is a problem. Mm. And this problem is not helped by those statutorily saddled with duty of protection. All right. Now, let's, let's talk about the Freedom of Information Act that is in place right now. The, mm. that, that act, the law has been signed, so we have the freedom now to practice journalism as it, <laughs> idea only, as it only, is. Only on, only on paper. I yeah, but, but in true terms, how effective on how are journalists taking advantage of that law and mm. the act? The, 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 yes, the act has been passed. It's there for the, the journalists to, to, use it, to make use of, to, to optimize. But you find that uh, the folks that must 
partner with you to optimize the act. How willing are they? They are not willing at all. The, the average official of government hides even the information he does not need to hide. Mm -hmm. The average official of government does not see the media as a partner, as a, as a requisite partner for progress. Yeah, but in, the, in this case, there has to be a precedent sometimes. The, we've not really seen any journalist who has sued or pushed and sued a government official or institution to court for not uh, 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 making of when he invokes the Freedom of Information Act. In well, other it, words, it, it ha really has not been put to the yeah, test. Yeah, it hasn't been put to the test. Yes, you also look at, this is what we're talking about, uh, institutions in our land. How cheap is it to go to court? I'm in court, for instance, and I can say to you that it's been tough going. Very, very tough going. Mm. I've had to go to court. I have to live in, you know, hide and seek and all of that just to stay safe mm. because you can't go to nobody to protect you and nobody available to protect you. And, you know, you then they realize that the Freedom of Information Act, as it were, you write a letter to any government official, it will gather dust on his desk. How do you enforce his response? How do you compel him to respond? What is his willingness to respond? And how truthful will his response be? You find that uh, you get into a situation where you're trying to get information. You do not, to start with, have the full backing of your you know, media, organization media owner to start mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. Your employer is customers. telling you that, look, he's not sending you out to go and be a hero. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, that kind of, um, uh, that kind of mindset is already following you. The, the department you're going to to seek for information are not your best friends. They're not there for you. You call several, they don't pick us. Mm -hmm. the, my instance, what happened to me, for instance, if response had been given when a questionnaire was sent to the government official in question, I possibly, probably, may not have been attacked. Mm. But this fellow kept hedging, they kept being elusive, and you know, the, 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 the journalist already has a mandate before his editor to file a report. And the question is, how does the journalist surmount all of these um, challenges to actually be able to uh, bring about an independent media which is one of uh, the major focuses of, or main thrusts of the day, to evaluate the level of independence of, of the media, especially in this part of the world. How independent, really, can you say that the media is? It's almost a no-brainer to ask that question. <laughs> but, I mean, you are a practitioner. The media you paint is, a picture for the us. The media is not independent. Let me, let me take you to the basics. You have a news, a news media organization. You have to publish, print, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. Even broadcast, you have to meet your bills. How do you meet your bills? You need to run commercials. What kind of commercials do you get? From people who will not want you to report the truth as to their activities. Now, if you now insist on reporting the truth, the commercial support ceases. Once that is off it, how then do you, do you move forward? So the, 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 the challenge is inhibiting the practice of media in Nigeria is gross, massive. And if you are not on the good, on the good side of media patrons, advertisers, basically now because of the, the collapse of our economy, mm -hmm. uh, the, the organized private sector isn't as uh, a viable source of advertisement revenue as it used to be. So that takes you back to government. Ah, now, if you are critical of government mm -hmm. activities, where do you get patronage from? So this is the vicious cycle. Okay. That it the it really is a vicious cycle, not to talk of the online freedom and the so-called cybercrime law uh, that punishes bloggers. That's a total, uh, a different dimension well, entirely, but we don't have time mm. to uh, broach on all of that. Yomi Olomofe, uh, Badagri Prime Magazine, thank you so much for your my time pleasure, on the pleasure, show. My thank pleasure you. being here. Yeah. Of course, we'll take a break now and return 